Hello everyone, we're just waiting for a few more people to join us. People are starting to join quite quickly now, but you might see on the screen that you are more than invited to write down your name, your projector type and where you are in the world. So I invite you to add that to the chat. We'll be looking over who's with us today. I see some people from America, Albania, Paris, nice, Belgium. Got the whole world joining us today. So many projectors in the room. Thank you all for joining us here at the Projector Movement. I hope you are looking forward to this free webinar. I will be introducing myself in a moment, but welcome to all of you. So thank you all for writing in the group chat. Yes, we're recording the webinars. I won't be able to read all of the comments. However, my um, co-host is also on here, so she'll be making a note of all of the questions on there so we can answer them in our own time. But yes, we will be having a replay. It will be sent to you afterwards. OK, so let's begin. Just to let you know who I am, I'm Rebecca. I'm a 1-3 mental projector. I'm a certified living a design guide with the International Human Design School, but I'm also the chart reader for the projector movement. As you can see from my chart, I'm a 1-3 mental projector with just one channel, the 43-23, going from my mind down to my throat. Lots and lots of openness. And I see there's a lot of mental projectors on the call and I always love to see mental projectors. So welcome to all of you. Okay. So the projector movement, just to introduce you to the projector movement, not sure if you guys are very new to the projector movement, or if you've seen us before, but we really do want to create a community for projectors around the world, a place where you guys can all come and feel like it's your home, like you've been found. So we very much stand for connection to other projectors, but also to yourself, supporting you through all the different ways like these three webinars but also our social media and our website and also guidance so we like to do this through the courses that we offer as well as the free things that we offer so we are the largest community of projectors in the world and we're proud of this so thank you all for being here because you very much make up this community so welcome home we're glad you're here and let's dive into this together you may have already seen, but we offer lots of different things. But the main thing for us, whether we offer the free courses or paid courses, is kind of the second thing for us. We really do want to create a community where you guys feel like you're moving towards your alignment as a projector. Projectors aren't the majority of the world. So we really want to create a place where you can feel like you're being assisted in your, in your journey, a place where you feel like you're being seen someone that is showing up slightly more differently in the world and that's beautiful and we want to make you feel empowered so many projectors come to human design and feel disempowered but really we want to make you feel empowered as a projector and we do that through our courses our trainings and our readings as well as our instagram there's going to be a public facebook group coming really soon so keep an eye out we have our website we have our podcast and we have our youtube so lots and lots of information here for you it's not just me, part of the team. I'm probably one of the newest members of the Projector Movement team. You're probably more well aware of Charlie and Sarah and Amy. And also there's people in the background who are making this all possible. But alongside all four of us and the people in the background, we are projectors who are running this community for other projectors, type for type learning. And that is really important to us. So in this particular webinar, now this is the first webinar of more, we will do these once a month at least. And in this particular one, we're going to be going through a kind of wide range of things, whereas maybe in the future we'll be honing in on one particular topic. We'll see how they go. But this one is a real kind of overview. So in this webinar, we're going to be looking at projectors in general these are our real kind of questions we get every single day at the projector movement what are invitations what's happening in 2027 what is our process this strategy and authority and our profiles this is what we're going to be going into for this session 
We're going to be looking into protect, projector sensitivity, how sensitive we are to people as well as the transits. And then we're going to be launching something on this webinar. So let's talk about projectors. Now, first of all, we are a special bunch. We aren't the majority of the world, but we really are here in this particular time to bring new things out. So in as we are projectors, we are one of the newest energy types and we have been brought in at this time in the world right now because of the changing of global cycles. This is the belief within human design. We have a lot of gifts within projectors. We can see others very, very clearly. We are very good guides and we're here to master systems in which we can guide other people through. Now, the world might make that seem like that's not our strength, but that is our strength. And through mastering those systems and guiding people, this is our magic. So let's really look into this and empower ourselves. So as projectors, we are approximately 20% of the world. So we're roughly one in five, and that's really important. We are the newest energy type, and we are here to kind of step into the world's role of the world's new leaders. You know, the day of the kind of old world was the manifester. Manifestors were this leader who was saying, we must do this, and they were initiating, but projectors lead from within. We guide from one and one, and we guide in a more kind of soft way throughout to kind of bring a new high vibrational frequency. We are designed to live very, very differently. And we'll look at this in a minute, but we aren't necessarily designed to live the same process as the majority of the world. We're not necessarily here to live that nine to five work life because often we'll be feeling quite burnt out by that. So we are here to live differently. We are here to lean into our gifts. Our gifts being that we can see people very, very clearly. We can often have those intuitive hits about what that person needs. We can guide them to where they need to be. Probably better we can guide ourselves to that place because we can see the other a lot more clearly than we can see ourselves sometimes. Our gifts are our sensitivity and our curiosity. We are so curious about the other and that is what makes us so special as projectors. We can feel into energy and we'll show this later on in how we are so sensitive. Now, because we're not here to live the kind of same life as the 70% of the world that are generators, we must honor our energy levels. And you might see this in projectors around you or in yourself, but we need to really honor our energy levels, our ebbs and our flows. We do have energy available to us, but it's just not as consistent as it is for everyone else. But this is great. And we'll look into the invitation about how we can make that an empowering thing for us. Now, this point at the bottom about mastering systems is really important for projectors. So yes, we're here to guide, but we can't just guide without mastering a system. We are here to go into things that we are really interested in, that we want to discover more about, that we feel really cool to. And through going into those systems and mastering them, that could be anything. It could be riding a bike. It could be therapy. It could be gardening. It could be literally any system that someone can recognize you for, and therefore you can guide them within it. Projector success comes from when you feel aligned to your highest self of mastering your system, and then you can guide other people through it. Okay. And when people first come to human design and they find out they're a projector, this is often quite interesting. Now, I think I have a poll set up here. So this is gonna be an interesting thing. We've got a question here, which is how long have you known about human design for? And I'm interested to know the people that are here today, how far you are within your experiment. So if I just launch this poll and just vote onto which one is yours, let's see who's with us today. Is it zero to three months, 11 months, a year, two years, seven years, let's see. We'll give this a moment or two. Let's see who we're speaking to, how far into our experiments we are. Lots of people in the one to two year category. Okay. Four to 11 months is popular also. Okay, and it's slowing back down. So most people with us today are between one to two years. Next is four to 11 months. This is interesting. So a lot of people still in the early days of their experiments. 
some people just finding human design and then we have the kind of smaller proportion of people who are later on in their experiments so thank you all for participating in that poll so we know who we're speaking to so I wonder if you guys can relate to this and put it in the chat if you can when you first came to human design and even now as a projector were you feeling these things were you feeling like you were trying to keep up with everyone else around you were you finding that the full-time work of the nine to five the 40 hour shifts the long working hours were they making you feel really burnt out were you feeling a little bit lost and underappreciated did you feel kind of rejected and bitterness was a common theme for you did it feel like you were being misunderstood definitely absolutely still working 12 hours a day yep I'm seeing these comments this is common for projectors right we are running this race that that generators are here to run and even generators can't do this 40 hour shift but projectors we aren't here for this and then you retired this is what we're all aiming for the retirement but we don't want to wait to retirement for this we want to enjoy our projector life throughout okay so I'll close this chat again, but thank you for your comments. This is what projectors find when they come to human design and they find out they haven't got energy and they go, oh, what am I here for then? I can't work, I can't, like, what is this then? What am I here to do? So let's look into this. Now, during the human design experiment, now we do have people that are further on in their experiments. So do, if you are further on in your experiment now, if you'd like to comment in the chat, because it's interesting to hear your experiences. Have you noticed changes in your environment, your job, and people groups around you? Have you noticed shifts in your perspective? Have you noticed that you're being more mindful and living in a full-bodied way of living? Are you feeling that you are able to give this intuitive guidance and you're recognizing others? Are you feeling more success and less bitterness? And are you feeling that you're able to surrender more? There you go. Stop working for the man in 2012. Yes, exactly. Lots of surrenderment. Yes, finally. Now, what I like about this is we've got lots of people at the beginning of the journey. We've got some people at the, towards like the kind of later half of the first cycle of deconditioning. And you can see the difference in comments here. Now it's speaking for itself. The people that have gone on their experiment are noticing huge, huge shifts. And that's not because of me, because I haven't get guided these people just yet. So let's look into how to get to the point of these people here. Now, one question that we get a lot is this, what is this projectors and what is this 2027? Now, let's just talk about 2027. Now, the basis of this is the world goes in its global cycle. So just like how you have your chart, the globe has its global chart too. And the global cycle is changing. We've been in a global cycle for about 450 years, the cross of planning, and now we're moving into a new cross. Now, the past 450 years, of, we've seen this kind of rise in United Nations, United States of America, charities, all of these things, big kind of corporations, but also things like supermarkets, supply chains increasing, new discoveries, technologies increasing, everything coming up. And especially since the 1960s, we've really seen technological advances happen. Now, we'd say this is all to do with the global cycle. 2027 comes and we're switching cycles. Now, we are going to be in a time that's less rooted in the collective, the tribe and support, which is the key word. And we're going to be more kind of rooted in self, busyness for self. So the potential is that the supply chains might start breaking down a little bit. And we're kind of seeing that already. We're seeing kind of turmoil in different countries, supply chain issues. And for example, we're seeing in the news, for example, Sri Lanka and um, during COVID vaccines, we're not going to get into it, but the global cycles are shifting and we're starting to see some of these play out already. So what does that mean? 2027 is coming. We're seeing the shift is already occurring. So we're going to need to trust ourselves more. So this comes down to how we make decisions as ourselves. So by aligning with how we make decisions, we can ride those waves a little bit more easily. We can start trusting in ourselves. As these times are changing, the role of the projector, we're going to start becoming more recognized as guides. If we're there mastering systems and the world is becoming a little bit more tumultuous, they're going to need very intuitive guides. So you can see how the projector role is starting to come into light. 
So we are here to step into leadership roles through invitation. And the way we do that is by aligning with our geometry, therefore our path or our spiritual journey, if you want to look at other words, but aligning with our geometry, which will take us to the correct environments for us and the right people. In human design, we call them fractals. It's the idea of the same crystal bundle as you. That's a little bit advanced there, but people are incredibly important. It's so important for us to be in the right places so we align with environment and people that are correct for us so we can guide the right people. So through accepting the correct invitations, we can guide the people that are meant for us to guide, to guide them into higher vibrations, to thrive and survival of those groups. So this is what that guidance is for. And sixth lines, this is an additional piece of information. If you have a sixth line in your profile, like a two six, for example, the sixth lines are going to feel way more at home in the three part process because of the keys that are being unlocked as part of the next global cycle. So your kind of process of trial and error moving into finally becoming this role model, you will feel more at home during 2027 onwards. That's the theory of human design. So how do we align? Now, this is one of the common questions. Invitation, the kind of misconceptions around it, is it empowering, is it not? And for us at the Project Movement, it is one of the most empowering pieces for the projector. Invitations are empowering. And let me just speak about this and let me reframe it. Projectors have this very outward facing aura. This is what makes us so good at guiding the other. But this means that we can't really turn it inwards to guide ourselves very well. It's why we feel we can guide the other better than ourselves. It's why we can see them better than we can see us. That's fine. So while we are mastering our systems, playing, being high vibrational, lifting up our energy, people are noticing this. They do. It's natural. Our aura is, is magnetic. We attract what we need into our life. So we've mastered our systems. And as those invitations come in, we get signposts to places where our guidance is needed. So for example, you're mastering a system. Someone recognizes it and says, you might want to use that here. Would you like to join us in this job? Would you like to come and volunteer with us? Would you like to be paid for this job? Would you like to speak here? Would you like to, these are the invitations. So the invitations act as our signposts. And those invitations need to be directed specifically at our uniqueness. This isn't just because you're a girl living in America or a guy hiking in Switzerland. This is because of your uniqueness, your unique channels within your chart. When you receive these signposts, they are directional signposts. They show us where to direct our energy to and they help us to reach projector success. We then get to choose we then get to decide whether we want to accept or decline the invitation. But invitations are how we know whether we should use our energy there or not. It's what is empowering about it. We don't have the energy to waste. We have specific energy for specific things and we don't know exactly who to guide with it. But the people that recognize us are the ones that direct us into the places where we should be directing and guiding them. Okay. So. The projector authorities, now I'm interested. We've done one poll and this is the final poll of this webinar, I promise. But I'm interested about who is with us today and who has which authority. So if I just start the next poll, let us see which authorities are with us today. Is it majority emotional or splenic or ego projected, self-projected, mental projector? Who's with us mostly today? Will it fit the trend of human design? Let's see. Okay, it's starting to slow down. That was a lot quicker than the other one. So the majority of you are splenic projectors followed by solar plexus authority, then self-projected, then ego projected, then Oh no, mental projector, then ego projected. Nice, you've got a lot of mental projectors in proportion. I like it. Okay, let's end that poll. So we're gonna speak to these authorities here now. So this is one of the common questions that we get about how each of these authorities works. So we've discussed how the invitation works. The invitation is to guide us to places where we 
need to guide others. Great, we've got that. So how do we then decide? So we'll start at the top, the emotional projector. Now this is an interesting one. Emotional projector, your motto is, there is no truth in the now. Now, 50% of the world have an emotional authority. And this is an empowering thing for you. It's empowering to say that there is no truth in the now. Slowing down with your process will really help you find clarity over what you would like to do. When emotional projectors make their decision in the moment, it's often they'll pull the kind of yes back afterwards. If they say, yes, I'll go to that party because they're in the emotional high, then it gets to the Friday and they don't want to go anymore. They have to get rid of that kind of piece. So the emotional projector, it's about once that invitation is received, this is a fixed point in time then what you wanna do is wait over time to find your clarity. You're looking for a percentage of clarity. It's never gonna be 100%, it's not certainty. So with the, with the emotional wave, you're looking over time to find your consistency. You're looking over time to find your clarity. How sure am I? Am I 75% sure, 80% sure? It's not going to be 100. Now, how long does this process take? Well, it depends. So each person has a different emotional wave, but we recommend about 48 to 72 hours to sleep on it at least. You want to wait for three cycles of your emotional wave and then you can find clarity. But sometimes it can take longer. So wait until you're about 75, 80 percent sure before saying yes or no. There is no truth in the now. Slow down. If it's meant for you, it will wait. If it doesn't wait, it's not meant for you in particular. They might not have recognized you. The splenic projector. Now, this is the complete opposite of the emotional projector. The splenic projector are the ones that know in the now, in the moment, they are led by the intuition. Listen into your gut. What does it say in that moment? What are you feeling in that one moment? Should you leave the house now? Should you say yes to this? You want to listen to the first initial whisper. That whisper happens once, and once you've missed it, you've missed it. So tune into your initial guidance. Now we're going into the rarer types here, the ego projected, the self projected and the mental projector. So the ego projected, you're looking for those kind of I statements as in what are you desiring to do? The kind of ego projected is the heart to the G center. So you're looking into what you desire doing. So listening out for your words, following your desires. Yes, it's a shorter, shorter explanation here, but you are listening to your I statements. Self-projected projectors, it is the G to the throat. You are listening almost like a sounding board. You're listening to how your tonality of your voice sounds as well as what you are saying about something. So when you are talking either to yourself or you're speaking to other people, you're listening to see how you sound about something. So for example, if you're saying, I don't want to do it, but you sound incredibly excited, this might be your voice saying, are you sure? How are you sure about this? What is your voice telling you? What's the tonality of your voice saying? What are your words saying? Now, mental projectors. Now, this is something I can speak to as a mental projector, and this is quite rare because it's not usually that the mental projector is hosting the session always. Mental projectors, we have two different ways of approaching our authority. We used to be called environmental projectors. So the first thing you can do is listen into the environment, feel into the resonance of the space around you. Is the space correct for you or not? What does the environment feel like? For example, if you're going around a city and you're looking at three different paths to go down, there might, there might be one path that is just shining out to you. Like that's the path I wanna go down. You don't know why, but it's just calling you. So the environment is incredibly important. If you're in the wrong place, it's the wrong invitation, it's the wrong people, it's the wrong everything. And that does go for most people, but really for a mental projector who is very, very sensitive to everything around them. Now, the sec second thing you can do, so once you've listened into your environment, once you've felt into the resonance of your space, this is when you need to start your soundboarding. So soundboarding needs to really happen in aura of other people, one-on-one. -on -one. And it needs to happen over a, a period of time as well, just to see if it's the transits affecting you. You speak to one person, you see what comes out. You speak to another person, you see what comes out. And you speak to another person, you see what comes out. And you're looking for 
what is consistent within those, but also your inner knowing drops in. You can try your soundboarding in terms of speaking to yourself on voice notes. You could try journaling, but really it needs to happen in aura of other people, one on one. OK, we could obviously go very deep into each of these. But as this kind of free webinar, we're just diving into some of those questions we get daily. So here are some of those information for you. Now, again, just to briefly mention these projector profiles, we're not going to go into each of these, but the six lines that we have here. So you're all going to have a combination of these. So to go very briefly into each one, the first line is our investigator line. This is the one that builds up a strong foundation knowledge of information. This is the one that investigates things that it is interested in. The two line is our hermit or it's our kind of natural genius. It is naturally gifted in different things. And by hermiting away in your own space, you get to develop those natural gifts. What comes easily to you? The third line is our investigator. It's not our investigator. The third line is our experimenter. There we go. The third line is our experimenter. We go through life in a trial and error way. I'm a one three profile. Can you tell? <laughs> so we go through life in a trial and error way. We make mistakes. And we don't kick ourselves for the mistakes. We get back up and we keep trying. Okay. Life is our biggest teacher, the third line. Fourth lines. This is the opportunist. These people are naturally influential. People gravitate towards you. And your networks are incredibly important for you. You might find that a lot of your job opportunities, your relationships, moving opportunities come through people around you. You need to invest in your networks around you and you need them to also invest in you. Opportunities come out of that, naturally influential. The fifth line is very good at solving things, very good fixer of things. It's very good at dropping in, solving something and then leaving. It's a bit like a consultant, it's a fixer of things, but gosh, there's an expectation on you. People really do place expectations on you being the savior. Now, it's so important for a fifth line to only accept invitations from people who truly see them. You don't have to solve everything. Solve the problems that you have a yes to from your authority. But you have got the ability within you to solve a lot of problems. And this is great. The sixth line is our role model line or it's our hypocrite line. There's always a duality to these. Now, the sixth line always goes on a process. So the sixth line goes through three parts. The first 30 years of a sixth line's life, is trial and error. It's basically a third line, but it doesn't enjoy the trial and error process as much as the third line does. The sixth line really knows it's here for something better than that. It knows it's here to be a role model in some ways. And it's like, why can't I just find out what I need? But for the first 30 years, there's a lot of things that it comes up against. Between 30 and 50, this is where you're going on the roof of the house, where you're kind of leaving society a little bit. And you're like, OK, take a breather. What worked? What didn't work? And you go back into it and you start laying the path for your life. You start planting what we say, planting your incarnation cross. You start planting your purpose, starting to find your feet. When you go past that and you go past 50 years old, you step into this role model or hypocrite. You step into role model if you have embodied the lessons that you needed to learn in the first 30 years of your life. If you haven't embodied the lessons, you end up being this kind of hypocritical figure who's saying you need to do this and you need to do that, but they haven't embodied it themselves. So as a sixth line, really learn from what the first 30 years of your life taught you. Really learn from the whole of your life and embody it. Guide as a role model. Now, that is just the surface level stuff. We can dive a lot more deeply. And we do, with the projector movement, do individual chart readings where we do go deep into your energy type, your centers, your channels, your gates, your lines, even some things into the PHS system. We do go deep into who you are. So if you were interested in that, we have it on our website just to let you know. OK, now projector sensitivity and current transits. Now, I put these two together because projectors are incredibly sensitive to that which is around them. We are. We soak in the world. We really, really do. So we soak in the world through all of our openness, all of our open centers, all of our open lines and gates and channels. These are our lessons, though. We're here to 
be conditioned. That sounds counterintuitive because we're here to decondition, right? But we're always as projectors going to be conditioned by the other because we are here to guide. So we need to soak in the other so we can know who they are in order to know how to guide them. So to some extent, we're always going to be conditioned. That's fine. We just need to know not to take that on and become it. That's fine. These are our lessons. All of the openness are our subjects. So if I showed you this next chart, it also shows again, yes, this is a generated chart. However, the blue stuff here is all the white elements. You can see we soak in so much of the world around us. We do. We're taking it all in and projectors don't have a boundary. Our, our projector aura is just soak in everything. So we really are sensitive to the world around us. And you can see here that we are sensitive to people around us. So on the left here, we have a generator chart. It is a emotional generator chart. And on the right here, we have a mental projector. This is my chart. And together we make this connection chart. So this is just to let you know that although you've got your chart, you're never just you. You are consistently you, but when you get another person next to you, the aura talks to your aura and you become a joint chart. So you're never just you, you are a combination of your chart plus the people around you and also the transits. So people really are important for projectors, especially because we soak them in. So we need to make sure we've got the correct people around us. Again, we do do connection chart readings. So if you did want to look into how the people around you are affecting you, we can look into that. Again, if I go back, you can see that people's charts overlay. So although I'm a mental projector and this person's an emotional generator, when we come together, we're this eight one being with a split definition, learning about our ego and worth. So there's so much we can dive into. OK, but it's not just people. It is the transit. So let's speak about this. Every single day there are transits. Every single day the planets move. So every single day, we are our chart plus the transit chart. Today, we are being influenced by the sun in gate 56. So the gate of stimulation, the wanderer. It's the gate of I believe or not. This is a voice gate. It's in the throat. And we're being grounded by the earth, always the sun and the earth, grounded by gate 60, acceptance and limitation. So have you noticed this this week? So let me explain how this can play out. So the 56th gate is a storyteller. You may find this week that either you or other people have been telling you a lot of different stories, all the different beliefs. I believe in this. I don't believe in that, actually. And telling you all the stories about why and what they've seen and all the wanderings. But being grounded by that 60th gate. The 60th gate is the start. It's this pressure to mutate, but it has to accept its limitations. So you might find this week that your stories enabled you to overcome some limitations. You might have been able to not overcome something before, but just you had a story this week and it just transcended it. It just, it just changed it a bit. It just went through, it broke through the limits a little bit. It can bring change. Stories do bring change. And you might have seen that this week or you may not have. Oh, a lot of people have seen it in the comments, just had a little peek. It's also a gate that can procrastinate a bit. So if you have noticed that you're kind of procrastinating, yes, sometimes the 56th gate can do that also. So we are always influenced by the gates around us. So let's have a little look about what we're coming into. So yes, this is what we've been through. We're moving out of this today. So this is the last day of experiencing this one. In fact, one thing that I will bring up before going on to this, my favorite transit of the year, and this is how you can tell how much the transits influence people. Around Christmas, every single year, it goes into the 58th gate. The 58th gate been the gate of the joyous. And around Christmas, we felt the joyous energy around. And it's not a coincidence that Christmas falls at the same time, according to human design. So the transits. So we've just moved into Leo season. So we've gone through the 56th gate and we've just moved into the 31st, which is happening what, tomorrow. The 31st gate being the gate of influence and verbal leadership. And it's been grounded by the earth in the 41st gate, the gate of contraction and decrease. So you might find that you take on leadership positions within this time or feel called into speaking and leading through voice. 
you might find that the, the 41st gate is this gate of desire, is the kind of starting pressure into, into desire and starting new things. It really wants to start new processes. So this is leading potentially into new directions or new desires, things like this. It's also this knowing that you have to pick one thing to move forward with, you can't do them all at the same time. So you might find that you're you're having to pick one thing to move forward with and then kind of rolling with it and kind of speaking to people about it and influencing people. Your voice might hold kind of more gravitas in terms of leading during this, this next kind of transit. The 31st of July, we move into the 33rd gate. This is an interesting transit because it is this Leo energy, it is this fire energy. And again, human design isn't really astrology even though it combines it it isn't astrology so the 31st gate being this gate of retreat and privacy and it's been grounded by the 19th gate of wanting an approach so we might be asked to kind of take a step back this is a voice gate as well so this is the voice of i remember so we might be looking back to kind of retreating away but this is retreating in order to find strength in order to push forwards so you might find with the 19th gate grounding us that you are being sensitive to the needs of people around you. So you might find retreating away because the needs of others are influencing you. And you can also see this and you pull out stories and you go, you know what? I remember when I went through a time like this, I can really feel your needs and now, and kind of guiding them through that, being quite sensitive potentially. Now, the other two ones that I brought up down here, the sixth and the twelfth, you can read them down here. But just something interesting to note, there are four quarters of the quantum mandala and we're moving into the third mandala section, the third quarter. And we do this once a year. We go through all the all the four quarters. As we enter into the third quarter, we're entering into relationships and duality. This is about bonding. This is about the need for other. So our focus as we move into this kind of period, the end of July, we're starting to need others more or we start noticing this we start focusing on kind of re reproduction comes under this it comes into the future of humanity it comes into two becoming one we're moving from the past one or the past quarter which is about the mind and into now the body so we're really feeling our bodies we're feeling relationships we're feeling other people we're feeling bonding we're feeling the two becoming one so this is interesting okay now, this new launch I was speaking about, now this is actually quite an exciting one, which I'm excited about, because it's one that has been around for a while, but it's something the projector movement has never offered before. And it's not something that's usually offered to just projectors on this scale. So this is an exciting launch. So this is the official International Human Design School Living Your Design Workshop. So this is the original in deconditioning and awakening programs. So, this has been designed by the messenger of human design himself, Ra Uruhu. He designed this many decades ago and it's been run all around the world and had quite amazing results. And it's intended that anyone on the human design journey take part in this, whether you're seven years in, one year in, found out about human design today, doesn't matter. This was intended that everyone take part on this at least once in their journey. It goes into all of the centers it identifies and confronts all the talk of the mind. It looks into what influences you and how you make decisions, as well as really going into each of those authorities that we just spoke through, but really deeply, and how to really align with our strategy. Not only that, it speaks about all of the different energy types and all of the different authorities for every energy type. So this is not only learning about yourself, but projectors, we're so interested in the other. When we come to human design, we pull up the charts of our brother, our mom, our, our friends, our sisters, our business partner. We pull up everyone. And this is a way of really starting to understand and empathize and really improving relationships as well as our understanding of people around us. But what's interesting about this Living Your Design workshop is it's exclusively for projectors with the projector movement. Now, when it was designed, this was the intention that it be type for type learning, that this is a transformative container. Now, when it's done type for type, and especially with projectors, we're pulling on group experience here. This isn't just someone speaking at you. This is a real group setting where we're asking people their experiences in their life. How did you experience this? How does this center play out for you? And through this group setting, 
we really transform together and we discover ourselves even more. So it is eight weeks. It's two hours on a Sunday, starting from the 7th of August. The time it happens is about 9 a.m. PDT or 4 p.m. UTC. And it's for projectors only. So it is this eight week long live transformative journey in a real projector setting. The International Human Design School offers this all the time, but it's not projector specific. So this time it will be projector specific with the projector movement. So this, this webinar is very much intended as a, an overview of projectors, the key questions that we do get asked on a daily, daily basis. But we do have a lot of other information for free on our social media pages, our podcast and our YouTube. And of course, this video will be available for replay afterwards. Now this was gonna be, I'm so pleased. Oh, so inspired right now, love that. This was gonna be about 45 minutes long and I hope you found this really useful. But if there are any questions, of course I invite them out. I won't be answering them all right now because there are hundreds of you on this call. Um, but if there's anything that's popping to anyone's mind, I don't mind sitting on here for maybe five minutes or so. Are any projectors better as self-employed so they can maintain their own schedule? Now, work is quite an interesting one because we do get asked quite a lot of questions about work and if it relates to the charts. Now, projectors, it always comes back down to strategy and authority. And I know it sound, that sounds disempowering, but it's not. When you are mastering your skill set, so whether, for example, you want to start a business and be self-employed, for example, in human design readings or in, in massage therapy or physiotherapy, whatever it is, anything. You are sitting there mastering your systems, playing, being very vibrational, and you're being recognized. So for example, and I'm, I'm a one three, I have to speak through my examples, my experience. I didn't apply to be a chart reader with a project movement. I didn't think I was going to be a chart reader, not because I didn't want to be. And this is the difference. I decided to go on a very, very radical human design experiment. And I've got a degree in public relations. I have done lots of different contracts around the world, New Zealand and Malaysia and China and all these different places. I've been a teacher, facilitator, all of these different things. When I came across human design, I just studied it because I was very, very interested in it. And I went into my human design experiment by stopping applying for everything. Genuinely went very, very radical. As soon as I stopped applying for jobs, I got more job offers in my marketing field. I got freelance clients in building websites. And then I got offered the position with the projector movement in terms of being self-employed and doing readings and hosting webinars and things like this. So are there any projectors that are better at being self-employed uh, so they can maintain their own schedule? We all, none of us are designed to work 40 hour shifts. The thing is where we're directed to comes from our strategy and authority. Where are the invitations coming from? Are you being invited by people to do freelance work? Are you being invited into contract work? Are you being invited into other things? Are you, there's so many different ways. Our mind can't really comprehend all the ways that we can be invited into things. So not particularly one type. If you look deeper into your kind of layers of this, for example, your environment, people with, for example, um, markets, internal environments work better at home um, on over Zoom and things like this. But, or if they have like a home office, for example, if you're a photographer or an artist and you have an at home studio, people coming to your house because your market's internal and people sharing conversations and things in your home, that can work very well. So it goes down to the real specifics, but it always comes back to strategy and authority. Okay. Will there be personal guidance in the Living Your Design workshop? Depending on how many people there are, we always get people to um, speak from their experience. We don't necessarily go into each individual chart that would come through a um, chart reading, but we do give advice on each center, which you then can, for example, if it's an open um, solar plexus center versus a defined solar plexus center, we'll speak through both of them. So you can apply the defined solar plexus guidance with yours. And if you're undefined, you'll apply the undefined guidance to you. So 
it's generalized, but it's specific when you apply it to yourself. But chart readings are the ones that go deep into yours. In terms of individual chart readings, they're on the website. So feel free to book on there and you'll be given a link to book. Shaw's Natural. Oh, it's a lovely one. Shaw's Natural Environments are where two environments come together that are natural. So, for example, the sea and the beach coming together or the mountain and the lake. It's normally water and um, like a grassy thing or it's a natural. It's a landscape rather than a hardscape. I do like Shaw's Natural. In terms of looking for new jobs as a projector, you've got to be seen. Yes, we're mastering systems, but you have to be seen for what you're doing, you know? Invitations, for example, to share your work can come through social media. If people are following you on social media, they are actively inviting you to share your thoughts on stuff. If they don't want to listen, they can leave. But they are inviting you through following you to, to share your points of views on things. So be seen for what you're mastering. Be seen for what you're doing. I know I said I didn't apply for any jobs, which is true. And I didn't apply for this chart reading job. However, I did get invited to do one, one interview. And that one interview one year later paid off. And the projector movement invited me into this. Although I wasn't applying for any jobs, I, was, I made myself active in searching for jobs on LinkedIn. People found me through there. So making sure you are seen. Will the course be offered again? We don't know. We'll see how this one goes, but I'm more than happy to. The name of the course is the Living Your Design Workshop. Yes, you need to be seen for what you've been mastered. You need to let other people know what you're doing. Thank you all again for coming and have a beautiful rest of your Sunday. <laughs> and we'll see you next month. Okay. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.